Ever since NVIDIA released the NVIDIA app, which has replaced their old GeForce Experience software, I've had a number of people complain to me and have personally seen a number of concerning complaints online that it slows down their PC and it messes with their in-game performance. So I decided to do some benchmarks for myself to see if this was actually the case. Let's get into it. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. If you're someone who uses an NVIDIA graphics card in their PC and chances are there is a lot of you out there, then you're also probably using the NVIDIA app or perhaps you're using the old NVIDIA GeForce Experience software because you don't like the app and you've had issues with it such as performance issues or slowdowns or crashes even. I was prompted to make this video and do these benchmarks for you guys and for myself because I actually liked using the old NVIDIA GeForce Experience software i'd often use it to you know quickly capture something on my desktop to capture some data or just to clip something for my own videos i thought it was fairly lightweight and it did the job well sure there has been some concern over its baked in telemetry but overall i've had little to no issues with it in like the last eight nine years i've been using it now last year in february nvidia released their nvidia app which was in beta form and this was a new software that was supposed to eventually replace geforce experience it would introduce cool new features it didn't require a login, and it also consolidated a lot of the settings from the old NVIDIA control panel and brought them into a more modern user interface. I think this was a much needed change because if you've also used an AMD graphics card or even an Intel GPU, then you'll have noticed that their control software felt way more modern and more responsive and was just easier to use. So the NVIDIA app helped put them on parity with bringing the software into a more modern user interface and give the user user a better experience. Some cool new features that were included with the NVIDIA app was stuff like RTX HDR, which I actually made a video about last year because I found that while it did look better than the Windows HDR, it did have a much larger performance impact. Other features include stuff like the DLSS override, where whitelisted games could have their DLSS model swapped so you can use the newer DLSS 4 Transformer model and uh, you know, get better upscaling, better visual quality for those games as well that don't natively support it. There's also the NVIDIA Smooth Motion, which allows you to basically use a form of frame generation with any game, kind of similar to AMD's FSR 3 or uh, Fluid Motion frames that they have on their software. They're not perfect. Obviously, there are some drawbacks, but it's cool to have access to if you want to you know, smooth out some games that may actually have some hard caps on it. NVIDIA did officially release the NVIDIA app late last year, in November where it was no longer in beta form and it has replaced the GeForce Experience software. So when you go to the official NVIDIA page to download that software, it will just give you the link for the NVIDIA app. However, there is a Reddit thread that links to the old GeForce Experience download. So if you really don't want the app for whatever reason, then perhaps you can try that link. On a 40 series card and older, you shouldn't really have much issues with installing it and using it as normal. But I have heard some complaints that those who tried it with their 50 series cards, it just straight up didn't work. Okay, editing Danny here, and I'm showing you guys a screenshot from my main personal rig, which has an RTX 5070 Ti installed in it. And while I did successfully install GeForce Experience while using driver 572.83 from a couple of months ago, you'll see that the NVIDIA overlay just doesn't work. It's just giving me the same message saying I don't have a compatible GPU. In any case, I've gotten comments on my YouTube videos as well as having seen discussion on various forums and threads online where people are complaining about the app, stating that it, you know, it slowed down their PC and it even also incurred a performance loss with their games. Now, for a piece of software that is supposed to be enhancing your gaming experience, if you have a negative impact or negative experience, then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of it, right? Therefore, I decided to do some benchmarks on my test bench to see if the NVIDIA app really does hinder your system's performance and I also did some comparisons uh, against the old NVIDIA GeForce Experience software. What I did was I had installed the old NVIDIA 566.36 driver from December 2024. This was the last driver prior to the 50 series being released which was with driver 572. And a lot of the users, especially those using the 40 series cards or older, are still actually using this driver from late uh, December last year because it provided them with the most stable experience where 
they said that the drivers that were released alongside the 50 series had caused numerous issues like crashes, black screens, or, you know, the card's not boosting. A plethora of issues. You guys can Google it, look on Reddit. There's tons and tons of threads about it. I ran a baseline test with the driver, and then I tested with the GeForce Experience software installed, and then I tested performance again with the NVIDIA app installed. I also did some uh, testing with the recording involved as well. After that, I fresh installed the latest NVIDIA driver, which at the time of making this video is 576.52 and reran all of the testing again except with this driver i just tested the nvidia app so this will allow us to see the differences in performance between not just the drivers themselves but also if the nvidia uh, app has more overhead compared to the old geforce experience software along with that what kind of impacts we'd see with recording and gameplay with that out of the way let's quickly go over my test system specifications and then we'll jump into our benchmarks for the CPU, I have a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, which I've overclocked using PBO and Curve Optimizer, and it runs the CPU at about 5.4 GHz. For the RAM, we're using tuned 32GB of DDR5 6200CL28 memory. The motherboard is an MSI X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. The GPU we're testing with is the RTX 4090, and I chose this GPU because it works with the 566.36 driver revision from NVIDIA, and the games are stored on a 4TB Corsair MP600 Pro LPX. For full system specs, you guys can check out the video description down below. The first game we're going to take a look at is Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And I like testing this game because its engine is pretty sensitive to high latency, background tasks, and even polling software. So I wanted to see what kind of results we'd see from our testing with the NVIDIA app. At 1440p, not a whole lot changes between the different configurations. Similar averages... And we saw our best 1.1% lows from the driver 566.36 configuration, and it didn't matter if I was using the app or a GeForce experience. Then at 4K, the differences look about the same, but for some reason, driver 576.52 yielded the worst 0.1% lows. Next, we have Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, and this is a pretty fun open world game. I've been playing a lot lately, and it performs quite well. I'm quite happy with the way they optimized this game, and it looks great. At 1440p, it didn't matter which driver we're using, or if we have the app or GeForce Experience installed. Performance was all the same, and then when bumping up the resolution to 4K, there's no difference. Performance is very consistent, and that's a good thing. It means performance isn't impacted by having these apps running in the background. The next game we have is Monster Hunter Wilds, and at 1440p, you'll see that the average and 1% low performance is pretty consistent across the board, but funnily, our worst 0.1% lows were from the result where we didn't have any background app installed, but it's not a huge difference. Then at 4K, we can see that performance is very consistent across all configurations. Horizon Forbidden West is next, and at 1440p, results are fairly consistent, and you'd be pretty hard-pressed to notice any differences between them. Then at 4K, without anything else installed, Driver 566.36 performed the worst, but that's just how it goes with these open-world games. You'll sometimes see a little bit of variance, but that's nothing to be concerned about. Moving on, and we have Baldur's Gate 3, and this is a very CPU-bound game I wanted to include, as this way we can see what kind of performance impacts we'd see from a game where the GPU is not really being heavily utilized. But taking a look at the results, you really shouldn't have anything to be worried about. It's all pretty consistent. And even at 4K, the results are pretty close to each other. Cyberpunk 2077 is next, and just like all the other games, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary with the results. Performance was relatively consistent regardless of the driver and if we had the NVIDIA app installed in the background or if it was GeForce Experience, and the higher resolution also showed us the same thing. Now, what I wanted to show you guys next were some benchmarks I did while I was recording in the background. The reason why I did these benchmarks is because I wanted to see if the recording impact from the NVIDIA app was more detrimental to performance than the old GeForce Experience software. If there's one big reason why lots of people use GeForce Experience, it's because it has the most minimal recording impact. Even if you were using NVENC through something like OBS, I found that recording through GeForce Experience, or Shadowplay as they called it back in the day, was very minimal. So it was handy for those streamers or content creators who didn't have a two PC setup but still wanted something that did the job for them. The first game we have is Black Ops 6 again, and we see that in this game, while average FPS is similar, the lows like your 1% and 0.1% FPS are a bit better with using driver 566.36 with the old GeForce experience installed. And it seems like the 0.1% lows with the latest driver and the Nvidia app performed the worst here. Is it a huge difference that the player will notice? Probably not, but if you did want to know what gave you the 
least performance penalty, then there's your answer. Then moving on, we have Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 again. We see that the opposite happens here, where performance using driver 576.52, using the NVIDIA app to record yields the best results for the 1% low FPS, but overall average FPS is the same. And going back and taking a look at the results without and with recording, we are barely losing performance here. It's virtually an identical experience, which is great. That's what we want to see. Horizon Forbidden West also showed some really good results. All the configurations with recording involved were basically on par with our results where there wasn't any recording done, and the differences were basically within margin of error. I'm happy to see this because it means that performance, even going back to a driver from late last year and with the old GeForce experience, isn't providing any major benefit as some people claim it does. Well, there you guys have it. I'm quite happy I did these benchmarks for myself, and I'm hoping it helps those out there that may have been anxious about installing the new NVIDIA app and are fearing that they might get a performance drop in gaming. Now I haven't extensively used the NVIDIA app on my PC so I can't really comment on how it's been in sort of like a desktop environment side of things or usability outside of uh, gaming performance and unfortunately that isn't something you can really portray with benchmark charts. All I can say is that for the past few months that I was using it I haven't really had any sort of terrible experiences with it or any sort of weird crashes or where it brought my PC or slowed it down to a crawl but everyone's experience can vary so it's just one of those things where you have to download it and try it out for yourself i think the benefits and positives really outweigh the bad because the nvidia app does have some really cool features in it it doesn't require a login and you know for my own benchmarks there is no performance hit when using it with gaming and also the performance penalty when you're recording with it is also very very minimal as for now though that's going to be wrapping it up for this one hope you all learned something and i'll catch you guys in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.